Hi there, I'm Wendy and welcome to my channel where I share crochet tutorial videos for my projects and techniques. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make my go-to basic multicolour crochet border that I've used many times over the years for baby blankets, lap blankets and pet blankets. And it's really easy to do. And so if you can make a granny square or you're new to crochet, then you can definitely do this. There's two depth options for this border and you'll also hear me refer to it as my treble sandwich and that's because of these three rows here where the outer edges are one colour and the middle row is sandwiched together in a different colour. I'm making the shorter version on here in the video but I will take you through how to make the deeper version as well and I'm going to put the start times of each round in the description notes below so you can come back to this video at any time and find exactly the right place. I'm also going to add some extra links in the description notes and that's for how to make granny squares or a granny rectangle or how to join your granny squares together so I can take you through the whole process. So let's take a look at what we're going to need and then we can get going. Just before we start, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get to hear when my next videos go live. And it would be great if you've enjoyed this video to give me a thumbs up too. So today I'm using a selection of colours in acrylic double knitting yarn and I'm using a four millimetre crochet hook. Now the ones that I'm using here are Starcraft Special DK, but you'll be using whatever yarn is relevant to your particular project. You'll also need a wool type darning needle and a pair of scissors for snipping your ends and darning in your ends afterwards too. So I would suggest a neutral or a light colour for the treble rounds. And then I would use bright colours for the treble sandwich and for the borders either side. So all in all, you're going to need one light or neutral colour, plus a minimum of two bright or dark colours. But for me, I used one light colour that was cream, and then I've got four really bright colours used on this border here today. This is the right-handed video, so if you're left-handed, I'll put a link in above here now and in the description box below to take you to the left-handed video. To start off, I'm going to work two rounds of UK double crochet stitch to add a splash of colour to start with and to make the inner edge of this border pop. So I'm going to use orange and I'm going to just pop my hook through any stitch. It doesn't matter as long as it's not a corner stitch and then pop my yarn in and pull it through to the front and make one chain to secure it. Then in exactly the same spot, I'm going to make one UK double crochet stitch. And I'm just going to double crochet along to my corner. So I'm just going to get to my corner stitch and then to turn the corner in this stitch here, I'm going to work one double crochet, two chain, and one double crochet. Okay, then I'm going to double crochet all the way along to the next edge, making one double crochet in each stitch. Now, obviously this will depend on the pattern that you're using um, for your piece of crochet. And then I'm going to crochet all the way along to the next corner and again make one double crochet, two chain and one double crochet in the corner stitch. And I'm going to work all the way around and I'll meet you back at the beginning of the round. I've now got to the end of the round so I'm just going to make my last double crochet stitch. And then I'm just going to make a slip stitch into the first double crochet that we made at the beginning of this round. And then I'm just going to join with a slip stitch, cut my yarn and just fasten off. And that is round one complete. Now round two is exactly the same. So I'm just going to pick a different color and this time I'm using green and I'm going to pick a different point and I like to make my starts of new rounds at different random points when I'm working a border and that way you just lose the scarring that you get at the beginning and the end of a round. So I'm going to join in my new color here. So I'm going to pop my hook through, yarn in the hook and pull it through to the front. And then I'm going to make one chain 
and I'm going to work one double crochet into exactly the same spot and double crochet to my corner. So just like the round below, when we get to the corner, we're going to be working one double crochet into the corner stitch, two chain and one double crochet. So here we are, I'm at the corner and it's one double crochet, two chain and one double crochet in exactly the same point. So now I'm just going to make sure that I haven't covered up the first stitch along the next straight edge and I'm going to work double crochets all the way along till I get to the next corner and in the next corner it's going to be one double crochet, two chain, one double crochet and I'm going to repeat that till I get all the way back to the beginning of the round again. So I'll meet you when I get to the end of round two. I'm now just making my last double crochet stitch in round two and I can join with a slip stitch and fasten off. I'm now ready to start working round three and when you take a look at the picture you can see that round three is a round of trebles and it almost looks like it's a background colour so I tend to use a pale or a neutral colour for this and today I'm going to use cream and I'm going to join in my new colour and make three chain to represent that first UK treble stitch. So that's one, two and three. And then I'm just going to treble till I get to the corner stitch. So we're almost there. And then when I reach that corner point, I've got that two chain space that I can work into. And for this round, we're going to be working two trebles, two chains into each corner. So that's my first treble, my second treble, two chain, and then two more trebles. So that's my corner complete and again I'm just going to make sure that I don't miss that first stitch going along the straight edge which can sometimes just get hidden when you've crocheted into a corner so just make sure you pull that back and you can see where that first stitch is. So now I'm going to work all the way along the straight edges just working one treble into each stitch of the round below and then I'm going to be working two trebles, two chain and two trebles into each corner stitch and again just like before I'll be meeting you back at the end of the round. Now I'm back to the beginning of the round and I'm just making my last treble stitch and then I'm going to join to the top chain so that's the third chain that we made at the very beginning of the round that represented the first stitch. So I'm just going to make a slip stitch into the top of the three chain fasten off and that is the first three rounds of our border complete and now I'm ready to work rounds four five and six that will create our little treble sandwich as I call it. So for rounds four five and six I'm going to use the bright pink for the outer edges and sandwich the yellow in between in the middle. So rounds four and six are just straightforward rounds of double crochet and I'm just going to join in the pink colour again at a different point. So I've pulled that through and make my one chain and then double crochet in exactly the same stitch and then double crochet to the corner space. So here we go and when we get to that corner space we're going to make one double crochet, two chain and one double crochet in the same space and then make sure that we just pull that stitch back so we don't miss that first stitch that's going along the straight edge and then we're going to double crochet all the way along the straight edges and then in every corner space we're going to make one double crochet and two chain and another double crochet all in the same place to turn the corner. So again, I'm going to meet you when I get to the end of this round, ready to start round five. 
So now I'm back to the beginning of the round and I'm going to join with a slip stitch and fasten off. And now we can start round five. So again, at a different point in my work, I'm going to join in my new colour, which this time is the yellow. And for round five, I want to start by making four chain. And this four chain is going to represent one treble stitch and one chain. So now I'm going to miss the next stitch and in the following stitch, I'm going to make one treble. And then I make one chain and miss a stitch. So I miss the next stitch here and I'm going to work into this following stitch. So it's one treble and one chain. And now I'm at the corner and so it's going to be making one treble and one chain and then again in the same space another one treble and one chain and a third time in the corner one treble and one chain. So when you look at your corner stitches, you've actually got three treble stitches there and they've got a chain space between them. So in the corner space, it's one treble, one chain, first time, one treble, one chain, a second time, and one treble, one chain, a third time. And now we're ready to turn the corner and then we're going to miss the next stitch, which is here. And in the following stitch, it's one treble and one chain. So I'll do that once more. Miss the next stitch ahead of you. And in the following stitch, you're going to make one treble and one chain. And we're going to continue this all the way around till we get back to the beginning of the round. And you will find that when you get to the corner stitches, if by any chance you're just one stitch out, don't worry because that's not going to notice in the overall effect. If you end up making one stitch directly next to the corner stitch, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to carry on making one treble, one chain all the way along and working those one treble, one chain three times in the corner to turn our work. And I'll meet you when I get to the end of the round. I'm back now at the end of my round and back to the beginning where I need to join with a slip stitch. But I just wanted to show you that I'm just one stitch out here and I've literally just got no gap between the last stitch of the round and the first stitch of the round. But don't worry too much because this really isn't going to notice in the overall effect. So I've just made my last treble and my last chain. And where I'd made four chain at the beginning of the round, I'm going to make a slip stitch into the third chain. So I'm going to count up one, two, three, and then I'm going to work into the side of that third chain and make my slip stitch and so that I have got round five now complete and I can just cut my yarn and fasten off and I'm ready to work round six, which is going to be again a round of double crochet stitches in the pink to finish off this little sandwich effect that we've got. So I'm joining in my pink again, but this time I'm going to join it into the top of one of the treble stitches. And so I'm just going to pop the hook in the yarn and pull it through and make one chain and then make one double crochet in the same stitch. Then I'm going to work one double crochet in the chain space. And all the way along, I'm going to be working one double crochet into the stitch and then one double crochet into the chain space. So one double crochet into both sides of the stitch and one into the next chain space all the way along till I get to the very corner. So I'm just getting to my last chain space and I've now reached the treble stitch that was in the very, very corner. So I'm just going to work one double crochet and two chains and one double crochet in that same stitch to turn the corner. Then it's one double crochet in the gap again and one double crochet in the stitch. 
So for the rest of this round, you're going to be working one double crochet into the treble stitch from the round below and then one double crochet in the chain space. So you're going to repeat that all the way along the straight edges and then when you get to that very corner stitch, you're going to be working one double crochet two chains and one double crochet to turn the corner. So I'll continue with this and meet you back at the end of the round when our little treble sandwich is complete. So I'm back working the last stitch in this round and I'm going to just complete again by joining with a slip stitch and fastening off and our treble sandwich section is complete. Now, just to finish off this central section of the border, we're just going to work one more round of straightforward trebles in the cream. So for round seven, I'm just going to join in my cream yarn and then make three chain to represent that first stitch. So that's representing my first UK treble. And then I'm going to treble along to the corner and just to give you a reminder that when we get to the corner space, we're going to be making two trebles and two chains and two trebles to turn the corner. So here we are. So we're at the corner space now. So I'm making two trebles. So that's my two trebles made. And then two chain. And two trebles in that same corner space and that has turned our corner so I'm going to work the rest of this round now and just working one treble in each stitch along the round and at every corner space I'm going to be working two trebles two chain and two trebles and I'm going to work round and finish off this round so that the main centre section of this border will then be complete now round seven is finished and I'm ready to work my last three rows of this border which is going to give me this little edging here with the orange scallop. But at this point if you want to make a double width border you'll be wanting to repeat rows four, five, six and seven. So you'll be wanting to make one more repeat of your little treble sandwich and then one more round of the treble stitches. So don't forget, I've put the start times of each round in the description notes below, so you can easily just find the correct point for each round if you need to double check on anything. And I'm going to just work rounds eight and nine, and they are just going to be the straightforward rounds of double crochet. So I'm just going to be joining in my new yarn, working one double crochet in each stitch. And then when I get to the corners, just like before, I'm going to be making one double crochet, two chain and one double crochet in each corner space. So I'll work these two rounds and then I'll meet you back here and we'll finish off this border just making this little orange scalloped edging. So now I'm back after working rounds eight and nine and both rounds were made using the double crochet stitch and in each corner space I made one double crochet, two chain, one double crochet to turn the corner. So I just want to work round 10 now which is this lovely little scalloped edging. So I'm going to take my hook and pop it through both sides of any stitch and then pop my yarn in the hook and pull it back through. And we're going to make one chain just to secure our yarn into place and pull the short tail end just to hold it there. So now I'm going to make three chain to start off. And I'm going to miss the next stitch and in the following stitch I'm going to work one slip stitch. So just to remind you, a slip stitch is where you're putting the hook through both sides of the stitch the yarn over the hook and then you're pulling it all the way through to one. Okay, so I'm now going to make three more chain and then I'm going to miss the next stitch and in the following stitch, I'm going to make one slip stitch. So it's yarn over the hook, pull it through and all the way back to one. So three more chain, one, two and three and now I'm at my corner space. So I'm just going to make a slip stitch into the corner space, yarn over the hook, pull it all the way through to one. 
And the great thing with this pattern is it's so small that we can just turn and it won't affect the stitch pattern. So again, I can make three chain, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to miss the next stitch and then make one slip stitch into the following stitch. Okay, so I'll do one more, one, two, three, miss the next stitch and then make a slip stitch into the following stitch. So I'm going to meet you back here at the next corner now so that I can show you what to do if you find that you're one stitch short at the corner and how to adjust it to give you a little bit of wiggle room and move your edging around the corner. So I'll see you back here in a mo. So I'm now approaching my next corner and I'm going to miss the next stitch and work my slip stitch into the following stitch. But this has brought me directly next to my chain space where I turn the corner. So that isn't going to make any difference at all. I'm still going to make my three chain, work into that corner space, making a slip stitch just like before. And then I can turn the corner and carry on just making my three chain, miss a stitch and then work my next slip stitch into the following stitch. And you can see that this scallop stitch is very forgiving and it takes you around the corner really nicely whether your last slip stitch is next to the corner space or one stitch before. So I'm going to carry on now until I've got to the last stitch of the round and I'll show you how I join it up and completely finish it off. So I'm now back to the beginning of the round and I just need to make my last three chain and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into that very first chain that we made when we first joined in that orange yarn. So I'm just going to go through the center of the stitch. Okay, and yarn over the hook and pull through the whole lot. And then I can cut my yarn and finish off. And then if I pull the tail end of the yarn where I started, it will just Pull it all back into shape and that is our border complete so there it is a really useful lovely bright and cheerful multicolored border which is really doable and if you can make a granny square then you can make this so i really hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you go on to make this border many times like i have and use it on a variety of projects so for now, I'll just say to you, thank you for joining me. Happy crocheting and I look forward to seeing you soon. 